Okay, just back from a road trip to Germany and Austria and I bought some records. Well, here we are, optimal records. So optimal records, good shop. Right, here we go. Peter Hamill in a foreign town. Let's see, what's the date on this one? Hang on a second. Right, this is late 80s, I think. Where are we? Where are we? German pressing. German pressing, 17 euros. Oh, on white vinyl. Oh, on white vinyl. Uh, 1988. I don't think I've got this one. I've got it on CD. I haven't got it on vinyl. So Peter Hamill, the great Peter Hamill, lead singer, Van de Graaff Generator, the best English songwriter in rock music, in my opinion. Fiercely intelligent, great lyrics. Right, um, Aldo Miola, Casino. Sort of filling up my collection of Aldo Miola, uh, albums 10 euros in optimal records yeah inside yeah it's got like you know printed sleeve printed inner looks pretty good uh for 13 euros i got the italian prog band banco which I, on the manticore label now this is my understanding is uh they released some albums in Italian language and then the Manticore label signed them up and then they re-recorded uh, several tracks and created this kind of debut on the Manticore label. It's the only Banco vinyl I've got, but I've got a couple of uh, couple of CDs. Uh, this was recorded in London. So this is these are re-recordings. It's mostly instrumental as far as I can understand. Uh, Shades of Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Uh... English lyrics that you can barely understand. So anyway, uh, filling out the prog and I've not heard this one before. Not got this one on CD either, but it's the Wall of Voodoo. And this one was what, 20 euros. That's a lot of money for me. Uh, Stan Ridgeway. Yeah. Nice in there as well. So looking forward to that one. So that was Optimal Records. So on to the next shop. Pass for an hour to go record hunting. So I'll let you know how I get on. And here we are. nice looking shop and uh, nice bins easy to browse and you can probably hear in the background John Lee Hooker's The Healer title track from a fantastic album which includes on this track Carlos Santana playing scorching guitar uh, but you've got uh, Bonnie Raitt and a lot of others on this uh, on this album too yeah definitely worth checking out if you're into John Lee Hooker really nice Here I am checking out the cheap bins. Everything here, three euros each. So, um, and I bought a small handful. So, uh, on to that in a minute. Well, good shop. Sure. 
Well, good shop. I bought six LPs at three euros each. I had quite a selection, some really good stuff in some good, in good condition as well, but it's not in alphabetical order. It's just a piled in. It just takes ages to actually get through the stuff. But uh, I left there about two hours earlier than I'd like to have done, but needs must. Got to get back to the girls. But not bad. A little haul there from Germany. So here we are. Bro Records. Once again in Germany. This time in Passau. Um, one, two, three. Is it five? Is it five? Yeah, five records. Here we go. First one is Jimmy Smith, uh, the, the organ grinder swing on the Verve label. The cover's a bit battered. Um, that's the label, but the record's good. The record is good. Checked all of them when I was in the shop. And uh, these are all three euros. So this is from the bargain bins. Back to Earth by Cat Stevens and Tea for the Tillerman by Cat Stevens. Now, I don't really play Cat Stevens very often and I don't, never, he never really comes up really, but I do like the stuff when I do hear it. But coincidentally, the day I bought these, I had two separate friends back in the UK who were telling me they were listening to Cat Stevens and were recommending that I should do so. Now, this is a classic. This one in the 80s, I think it was, is considered to be a bit of a dud, but for three euros, it's worth a chance. Uh, this one here is on the um, Island label. So you get a chance to have a look at it there. Two more. Iron Butterfly Live which has got Inagada De Vida on it, all over side two. Um, I don't know this album at all, but I know of the band Iron Butterfly. I've got one of their albums, but I haven't played it in 20 years. And I didn't really, you know, it's one, I picked it up cheap and I haven't played it in 20 years. And while we were in Paso, we spent half an hour in the cathedral listening to an organ recital before I went to the record shop. And I went to the record shop and here we've got an album of an organ recital in Paso Cathedral. So this has got uh, bits by, pieces by Bach, the Toccata and Fugue, of course, the famous one, Max Rega and Franz Liszt. Um, so there you go. So a little classical one to complete the, uh, the, uh, the little hall there from Germany. So I've walked up from Marienplatz for about 40 minutes because I've got wind of another record shop that's open. Shall I have a look? Oh, well, that record shop was a complete disappointment. It's uh, advertised online as having a vast selection and very reasonably priced records. Bargains galore kind of thing. But what you got is that anything that was collectible, it was wrapped in plastic and packed so tight that you couldn't browse without taking half the, half the, uh, the box out at the time. So I thought, to hell with that. And then the cheap bins, five euros a piece. I always like to have a look at the cheap bins. This is a kind of gauge, kind of what the locals like or don't like. And uh, any old crap in there, absolute rubbish. So uh, I spent half an hour desperately trying to buy something as a souvenir and then gave up, waste of time. So uh, I've walked, absolutely, I've walked a couple of miles to this uh, record shop, but this is the plight of the, uh, the record collector or the, uh, the obsessive, the OCD type. 
Anyway, gonna rendezvous with others and uh, get out of this damn town. See you later.